Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm Jonathan Little. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. It is a happy, what's it, Friday? Turns out when you work from home and you don't do anything on the weekends and um, you never leave the house, the days kind of blend together. My wife pointed that out to me today and actually um, I kind of already knew that. <laughs> I already knew that because, well, that's been my life for the last long time. I don't really go out. I um, work from home. So when I'm at home, the days very much so blend together. She's like, yeah, it's almost like there are no weekends. So everybody has a seven day work week now. I'm like, yeah, welcome to my world. And now it's even more so. So what we're doing is basically we're doing our best within reason to work whole days. Like I'll work my whole day. Like today is my day. Friday, I'm working all day. Um, yesterday was my wife's day. She worked all day, right? So I'm taking care of the kids. I took care of the kids yesterday. She, I took care of the kids on Wednesday. She's taking care of the kids today. I'll spend half the day with the kids tomorrow. Then in the evening, it'll be her and her mom here. So, you know, we are blocking off days at a time, which I'm not sure is actually ideal, but I know I sure have a lot to get done today and I'm going to do my absolute best to get it done. Speaking of getting stuff done, I was reading Twitter. Someone, I think it was Joe Ingram or someone like that, posted something to the effect of they, they are like more bored than they've ever been or something like that, or time's moving slowly or something like that. And I'm sitting here thinking, wow, that's the exact opposite of my experience, because if anything, time is flying by, I'm not getting anything done, and that's because I have two kids at home. And I posted, yeah, if you have two kids at home, it's very different. And he's like, oh, or somebody else replied, um, David Tuckman, he has a great podcast, check it out. Um, he replied, yeah, same story here. And it's interesting. I, I see a lot of people, especially single people, are having big, big, big issues with working from home or being home without any clearly defined thing to do. And so today we're going to discuss developing a schedule. Because it turns out if you develop a schedule and you stick to it, you'll actually get a whole lot done. People always ask me how I get so much done. Well, I don't have a very, very strict schedule, but I certainly do stick to a rough schedule where I wake up, take care of the kids, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., sit in my office and work. And that's very different than what a lot of people do. They you know, wake up, they hang out, they watch some TV, they have some lunch, they hang out some again, have a drink or two, they have some dinner, they have a drink or two, they watch some TV, they go to bed. And it turns out if you do that, you don't get anything done. So I'm gonna discuss scheduling in general, give you a rough schedule for what I would do in my ideal world if I was a single person today. So um, let's get to it. So first things first, realize that whenever you make a schedule, whenever you sit down, you're in like a good sound mindset, you're going to do it. This is your like best, most strongest mental self, right? And you need to trust that strong version of you to make the decisions as opposed to the lazy, weak version of you, which you will inevitably have. Uh, you'll go through periods of immense self-control and complete lack of self-control. And you wanna make sure that you always default to your good physical self. So understand that, right? And you need to do your best to absolutely stick to what you say you're going to do. There's this idea of integrity, not that um, you know, you're like a good ethical person necessarily, but that you do what you say you're going to do. And if you say you, for example, are going to wake up at 9 a.m. and meditate and have breakfast and work out, you do it. And if you don't, you should actually feel bad about that because essentially you're lacking integrity if you don't do what you say you're going to do. It means that your words, the things that you say, don't actually matter. And that's very, very bad, especially in an industry like poker where you know your word is really all you have to some extent. So make a point to resolve to do the right thing. Is some percent rake beatable? Rake is always beatable if the opponents are bad enough. Are we live today? Yes, we're live. Oh, speaking of which, yeah. So I'm um, giving away free access to all of pokercoaching.com before I forget. Go to pokercoaching.com slash free access. You can get access to that until the end of March. I realize March is almost over. We have four days getting there and grind it out. All right, so next. You want to ask yourself when you're developing your schedule what you personally actually want to accomplish in life. This could be getting in shape. It could be learning a new language. It could be learning the program. It could be, you know, doing all sorts of stuff, right? 
But you need to figure out what you want to do in the short term and also in the long term and work towards those goals. Some goals are very short term, like clean up your office or, you know, rearrange your drawers where your clothes or, you know, clean out your clothes, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely do that. Those are short term goals, nice, easy, one time things you can do. But then also you want to have long term goals like get world class at poker or learn to speak Chinese, things like that. Um, and, and you should have various types of goals because with things like, well, big goals, like get world class at poker, that's going to take a very long time and you're going to have a very relatively little reward on the way up to some extent. Whereas things like clean out my drawers and donate a lot of my stuff that I'm not using to charity, that's something you can do and you can feel good about yourself immediately. And you can have a long list of those very, very short things, which is, which is nice. Um, as you complete tasks, challenges, etc., reevaluate what you want to be doing, right? Let's say you do decide to learn Chinese and you get very proficient at it. You probably don't need to be studying Chinese all that more, all, all, all that a whole lot more, right? Because you've already done it, right? Poker's a neat thing because you're never really done. Um, but things like learn a specific task, right? Learn to code in a specific language or learn Chinese or get in pretty good physical shape to the point that you no longer have to you know, be trying to cut weight or whatnot. That's going to... You need to reevaluate as time goes forward. So don't just like stick to the same thing all the time. Um, realize that whenever you do set a schedule, you will inevitably fail or things will come up that kind of jiggles the schedule around. And that is okay, right? Ask yourself, is this an acceptable thing, right? Like say your parents come to town and they want to hang out with you. Well, that means your current regular schedule is going to be a little bit off because you, you want to hang out with your parents and they want to hang out with you, right? Or say you get sick. And say you normally have them going to go to the gym, but you get sick, so you don't go to the gym. That's fine and reasonable, right? What you don't want to have start happening is you don't want to, you know, stay up too late for no real reason and then not wake up on time and then ruin your morning schedule. That kind of thing is going to go a long way to actually messing you up. So let me show you what I would be doing right now if I was a single person. If you're on Instagram, sorry, you can't see the schedule, but I have a schedule written down here. I would do something like this, okay? This is rough, I thought about this literally five minutes ago. I would actually write this down and stick to it and go through it every single day. We actually make a schedule every morning for Mr. James because if we don't have a schedule for him staying at home with us, turns out we actually don't get nearly as much done. And our schedule looks a little bit like that. How do you see the schedule if you're on Instagram? Go to poker or youtube.com slash poker coaching and watch it there. Instagram it does not cooperate with the other platforms like all the other platforms do. All right, so I would wake up at about 9 a.m. Again, this is if I'm a single person. I wake up at about 9 a.m., take a shower. At about 9.15 a.m., I would meditate. I would sit down and literally meditate for 30 minutes at least every day. That would be nice. I would love to do that. Love, love, love to do that. I don't think that's in the cards for me anytime soon because I have two children. But again, this is what I would do in my optimal world. So I'd wake up at 9 a.m., meditate for 15 minutes or for 30 minutes, have breakfast. Breakfast doesn't take too long. You know, have breakfast. If you feel like reading the newspaper, I guess that's fine. If you feel like checking emails, that's fine. Um, then I would work out from 10.30 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. to about 11.30 a.m. Then I would study a language. I think studying a language is something that I, well, I do like studying languages. I would love to have the time blocked off to do that. Again, this is, I'm, if I'm stuck at home, I don't have a job right now because we are stuck inside because of the virus. This is if I have literally nothing to do. Okay, so I would study a language from 10.30 till about 1, 1 o'clock, give or take. You know, decently long study session. Maybe you'll find shorter study sessions are better for you or longer study sessions, et cetera, et cetera. Then I'd have lunch from like 1 o'clock till 2 o'clock and I would kind of goof off during my lunch. I mean, even today, I kind of goof off during my lunch. I'll have lunch for like 15 minutes and I'll watch a YouTube video or something that's not related to poker or anything like that. It's just purely for fun. Um, I use that as like goof off time. Then I would study poker from at least 2 until 3.30. And then I would play online poker. Put a tiny bit of money in one of the shady sites that you should not keep much money in. And I would play online poker. I would actually play for two or three or four hours a day. I would actually sit there and do that every single day. Um, the timing doesn't really matter because I'm not necessarily playing to win money. I'm playing for practice and experience. I would generally suggest you don't play for life-changing money on the sites that may randomly take your money. So be careful of that. Then I'd have dinner at about 7 o'clock. 
I'd watch a good movie that I've not seen from 8 until 10. I'd go through like the top 100 movies of all time or something like that. I've probably seen seven of them, <laughs> right? So there's 93 movies that are generally thought to be very good movies that I would love to see. I would sit down and I would do that for two hours a day, right? Then I would read some fiction or a biography for about an hour at 10 o'clock. You know, get off the screens. Don't be on screens from 10 until 11 or an hour before you go to bed, give or take. Then I'd go to bed. And everyone who's out there saying that I'm bored with life sitting at home all day, I doubt they're doing much of any of these things. What they're probably doing is they wake up at 9 a.m. Actually, to be fair, they probably wake up at like 11 a.m. They have some food, and then they watch Netflix until 2, 2 a.m. And, you know, Netflix and chill is fun and all, but it doesn't really make you better at life. And like this right here. I was trying to think, like, what would I do even if I don't have a job to do, right? This Notice this schedule here is just stone, no job, nothing to do. And it turns out, with this schedule of nothing to do, you can get in a good mental headspace by meditating. You can work out. You can get in good physical shape. You can learn a language. You can learn poker. And you can learn about great movies. And you can either read good fiction or you can learn about the most influential people who ever lived. And that's with nothing to do, right? All the people who are out there bored are completely squandering their time, right? So why are people doing that? Why is this happening? Why are people being bored? And how do we help them realize that they do not need to be squandering their time? Let's see what all of you say about this. You love the Matt Affleck webinar. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Does it count as meditating if you're smoking weed before? I would tell you, if anything, this is the prime time to get off of all drugs and whatnot. For example, I've had no alcohol for a while, right? I mean, I'm at home. There's really like, in theory, this should be one of the more easy times of life because for a lot of people, they're at home. Nothing to do, right? There's no stress besides, obviously, the world going to poop. Um, but... This is the time to get off of whatever substances you have. I mean, I was debating whether or not I want to get off of coffee. I decided not to. It's like the last thing I'm holding on to. To be fair, like one cup of coffee a day is probably absolutely fine. And um, that's that. You have a preferred meditation technique. Look, I'm not a meditation pro. This is what I would do in my ideal world. I usually just load up the Calm app, C-A-L-M, and go through that. They have some new meditation every day. 10 hours of sleep is overkill for you. That's two extra hours of playing and studying. Sure, right? Again, this is in my ideal world. You may find that whenever you, well, let's imagine this. Let's imagine you had a job before and you were trying to fit in all this stuff and you were sleeping six, seven, eight hours a night. You may find that you would like 10 hours a night for a little while, but then you may find that you revert back to eight. Sure, right? Adjust the schedule. Nothing wrong with that. Remember, you should adjust the schedule as it makes logical sense. Let's see... He said he never reads fiction yesterday. I don't know if I was here yesterday, but I really, I really do not read a lot of fiction. I wish I had time to, though. That's one of those things that like, I wish I could do. Again, this is not the schedule I do. This is the schedule I would do if I was a single person with nothing going on, right? I mean, for example, I don't watch movies. I wish I could. Like I just said here, I've seen probably seven out of the top 100 movies. I would like to watch movies. I would like to read biographies and fiction. I would like to... I already study poker. I'd like to play more poker. I mean, I, I play almost no poker from home. I'd like to study a language. I'd like to work out every day, right? These are all things that I would definitely like to do. And if I was in the situation a lot of you are in where you're at home, you don't have kids to take care of that are sucking away all of your time, and you're complaining about being bored, here you go, right? All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's see. By the way, if you want to study poker... Like I said, go to pokercoaching.com slash free access. You can get completely free access to poker coaching, poker coaching premium. Everything I have to offer there is available for you completely for free between now and the end of the month. I know we're having a webinar with Jonathan Jaffe and a webinar with uh, Michael Acevedo over the next few days. So make sure you sign up and attend those. These are webinars that I pay tons of money to put on. Coaches don't work for free. And I'm just giving it to all of you for free. Everyone wants to know where this tournament course will launch. Whenever I'm finished with it, I haven't even started making it yet. We're in the middle of making it. Believe it or not, the process of making a PowerPoint that has 800 slides actually takes quite a long time. All right. Let's see, let's see. 
Smoking weed raises your heart rate, makes it harder to meditate in your opinion. I mean, look, I, I'm certainly not an expert on drugs. I've done relatively few drugs. And I think that you will find that getting off the drugs is better than being on the drugs unless you actually have a legitimate need for the drugs. And I kind of think most people don't have a legitimate need. Some people do, but I think most people don't. They just think they do. I generally think drugs are drastically overprescribed in our culture. And, um, well, as Lady Deuces says here, meditating sober is the key. And I completely agree. You've ever tried meditating drunk? Doesn't work. You just go to sleep. <laughs> or you freak out, one of the two. You don't want to go to sleep or freak out when you're meditating. Um, there's this idea of anxiety. So I'm very fortunate in that I don't really feel much anxiety. And... I definitely did as a kid. I was very, very shy as a kid, but I never really feel anxiety pertaining to the world. I more so feel anxiety pertaining to like my specific performance, if that makes some sense. Um, it's tough. It's tough because like that's just not a feeling that I have. So I can't really relate with that. I know my wife feels way more anxiety than I do about things. Like, for example, the virus going on outside. I don't feel all that much anxiety. I'd, I'd rather it not be happening. I'd you know, do my best to help everyone in need that I can, like by giving away my site for free for the, till the end of the month. But I'm not like deathly afraid because I realize whatever's going to happen is going to happen. All you can do is play your best given the hand we are dealt, right? And I don't know. I don't feel anxiety so much. So maybe I'm lucky with that. But I would ask, why are you feeling anxiety? What's What, what are you actually concerned with? Acevedo's at 3 p.m. today, right? I actually don't know. Go to pokercoaching.com, sign up. There is a tab that says when the next webinars are coming up. All right, let's see. You've watched Michael Acevedo's webinars multiple times, at least the ones with Biosolver. There's so much there. There's absolutely so much there. Do you misplay that you feel anxiety? I have no clue what that means. What are the pros and cons to online poker? Do you play online at all? Yes. If so, where? I play on Party Poker and Poker Stars. Only two places where I have an account. I play when I'm out of America. I do not play within America. That is not allowed. Pros, there are, I mean, the pros are that you get to play in tough games against good players at stakes that aren't even that big. So you get great experience. What are the cons? There aren't really any. I mean, the cons of online poker playing within America is that you have to play on a shady site. So just keep the minimum amount of money on there, right? Play for the absolute minimum. How do you increase your poker math? Study. Um, there's actually a book called something like the poker workbook or something like that by a guy named Doug Hull. I vividly, I vaguely remember looking through it. It was kind of like a workbook, like a quiz book. I would tell you to look into that. Um, I know there's some book by, um, Alton somebody. I'm, it's not, the name's not coming to me. It's always like highly reviewed on Amazon. I've never read it, but it's probably good. Learn statistics. Yeah. Learn statistics. That's a good idea. But I address you paying for Poker Coaching Premium as a premium member. It feels bad to pay when it's currently free. Well, you know, Kevin, we actually were debating to give away Poker Coaching Premium for a month. But we didn't want to do wrong by the people who were paying. So, i tell you what. If you really are anal about not paying for six days of Poker Coaching Premium, whenever you go to cancel, send us an email and say you'd like to be extended for six days because that's what we gave away to everyone else. There you go. If you are really that concerned about paying for six extra days. All right, let's see. Sometimes you have an illness where you can't help anxiety. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I completely agree that sometimes that may be the case, right? Um, and that's not what I'm referring to. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's some level of, there's some spectrum, right? Where like you don't feel anxiety at all. And there's some level where you like, you feel it in, an insane amount. I'm definitely on the lower end of not at all. One thing I've learned, Dylan, is that a lot of the things you do just don't matter, right? A lot of guys get really nervous when they go to talk to girls that they are into, right? And my, myself included. And eventually, I just came to realize that it doesn't really matter what you do because what's the downside? What's the worst case that happens? And um, they don't like you? You know, whatever, get over it. And that happens in a lot in life, right? If you ask a question, this may be a dumb question. It's okay, right? I mean, you may, you may get slightly chastised for asking a dumb question, but that's that. 
I was uh, in a group thread the other day where um, someone made an investment. They want a bunch of money because of the investment. And then they asked for like free access to the business that the investment was in. And they're like, we just, you just made you a hundred thousand dollars. Now you're going to ask for a free $5 membership. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you go to the casino, I want a hundred K. Can I get a, a backpack to take it out in please? Uh, so anyway, realize that, like some things you say are going to be a little bit silly and that's okay. That is a okay. And, um, it's like, ask what's, what's the worst that can happen in a lot of scenarios. And very often the answer is nothing. Or very, very, very little to nothing. I mean, I was deathly shy as a kid. I would not. I was like afraid to talk to anybody. Um, I'll tell you what helped me a lot was playing the trumpet in school. I was the best trumpet player in the school, so I had to play solos. And for some reason, the band director always assigned me um, solos that were too difficult for me to actually perform. I don't know why I did that, but it was probably very helpful in life because I would get up there. You do like a halftime show and you play your trumpet in front of a bunch of people. And I would fail about 75% of the time. And um, I felt very bad the first few times. I was like, oh my God, I'm the worst, etc. Then I realized like, this is obviously too hard for me to do. I'm going to fail here. And that's okay, right? So you get up there and you fail over and over and over and over and over again and you get used to it. Poker is very useful for that as well, right? And whenever you go to play a poker tournament, you're probably going to fail. Fail. Fail meaning lose. But losing does not necessarily mean failing, right? I think that's the problem is a lot of people associate not performing as you would like to, to failing, but that's not really failing. It's more of, you know, as long as you are working harder and getting better and learning and progressing, good things are going to come in time, right? Let's see. Lady Deuce says she would recommend Positive Poker. Yeah. It's a um, book I have with Dr. Trisha Cardner. Where is it? We have two books on poker mindset, Positive Poker and Peak Poker Performance. Here they are. Check them out. Go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash books. You'll find them right there. You took your first private coaching session with just GTO. You went two hours and you learned so much. Good. Glad to hear it. You think that you're owed six free days if uh, you're already a paying member. You know, hey, like I said, if you if you want your six free days, if you're if you're going to be like that, that is a okay with me. But again, I want to do everything I can to help everyone out there, and I'm happy to give away all this, this, the entire site that I have, PokerCoaching.com/slash free access to all of you until the end of March. Can you get your ebooks on your site? You can get, um, I don't know, actually. You cannot get the books by DNB Poker. Some of my books are published by DNB Poker. As you see, DNB Poker there. These are not actually my books. I do not actually own these books. I own the rights to these books, which I gave to DNB Poker. So I cannot give away free ebooks to all of their ebooks. That's not how it works. So, no. You're a soldier with PTSD. There's a lot wrong with you. No limit holding brings you peace of mind. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Poker is a great way to, I don't know if I'm going to say escape life, but like, um, you know, just like clear your head and focus on one thing. You're going to find that focusing on things brings you a lot of happiness, clarity, etc. which is why, like I said, if I was a single person, notice we actually have a whole lot of focuses here. We have meditation, which is a focus. We have working out, which is a focus. We have studying a language, which is a focus. We have study poker, which is a focus. We have play poker, which is focus. Watch a good movie, which is focus. Read a good book, which is focus. All of these things are you working hard to better yourself. And like I said, if I was a single person right now, I would be in heaven because all I would want is to have no excuses to actually do all of the things that I would actually want to do in life. If you all are enjoying this show, by the way, click like, click subscribe. That goes a long way to helping the algorithm know that you enjoy my content. If you never signed up at PokerCoaching.com, there's not a better time. I know you're all sitting at home. And um, until the end of March, the whole site's completely open for you. Are casinos in Vegas still open? No. As far as I know, they're all closed. I think they were government mandated that they were closed. What are my thoughts on using a VPN? I would tell you to not use a VPN to play poker. There's this um, saying, you don't, uh, you don't poop where you eat. And if you're playing on a poker site, 
You don't want to poop there. A good way to poop there is to break their terms and conditions. Now, you know, I, don't, I actually have not thoroughly read the terms and conditions of every site. Maybe there's some sites out there that welcome VPNs. I've actually been invited to play on a site or two where they say, yeah, you can VPN in, no problem. Then it's like, uh, what do you do? Um, a site that wants to do that, you may have to be slightly careful with, but you know, whatever, I don't know. I don't know. I would tell you to not poop where you eat. I know that. I learned that the hard way many times. So um, be smart. Let's see, let's see. You figured out why the homework challenges were tripping you up. You completed one last night. Well, good. We have a lot of homework challenges at PokerCoaching.com. You know, if you all really want to take your game to the next level, what I would tell you to do, go and watch the Cash Game Masterclass. It's in the Classes tab under Courses and Bundles. Go through that entire thing. This is how you're going to get good at poker in the next four days. Go through that entire thing. It's going to take you about eight hours. Then go through as many Poker Coaching homework challenges as you can. Start with the oldest one and work your way to where we are previously. You're not going to get all the way caught up because each one takes an hour or two or more. And doing that will make you way, 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 way better at poker than pretty much anything else that you are going to do. That is how you supercharge your poker skills in a short period of time. So Cash Game Masterclass is going to teach you how to play fundamentally sound. Then the homework will help you learn to adjust to various stack sizes, various opponents, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, do that. Um, so in terms of scheduling when you have other things going on, like big issues in life, like let's say we had a job, right? How would I make a schedule if I had a job? Where from, let's say, um, let me move all my stuff out of the way. Let's say we have to wake up now at 8 a.m., be at a job by 9 a.m., right? 8 a.m., wake up. And then we have a job from 9 until 5. Ooh, look at all that time just sucked away. Work. You got to work from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. 5.30 p.m., we um, study poker. Mm, maybe that's not the ideal time. Maybe we want to have dinner first. Eh, let's do study poker first. By the way, if you're watching this on Instagram, sorry, you can't see the schedule I'm typing. Study poker, 7 p.m. dinner, 8 p.m. play online, online poker, 10 p.m. read fiction biography, 11 p.m. sleep. There you go. This is the schedule that I would suggest you do if your whole goal is to get good at poker. Nice and easy. Still gives you plenty of time to sleep, right? Still gives you time here for an hour to do kind of whatever you want. I would tell you, you probably want like reading and something chill towards the end of the day. Um, this gives you a solid hour and a half of poker study each day and two hours of poker play each day, right? Nice and easy. It's not fun and sexy, but it is nice and easy and it will get you where you want to be. And I think that this alone is like more than what a lot of people do. They wake up, they goof off, they go to work, they come home, they goof off, they go to bed. And that's certainly not ideal. You always want to ask as well, like, am I doing anything that butchers my chance for success? What a lot of people do, they'll come home, they'll have dinner. They don't study poker, they watch TV. They do TV time right here. They have dinner, then they go out until like 2 a.m. Then you're like, what? So then they wake up tired the next day, they go to work, they're tired, and then they're just tired perpetually. And you definitely do not want to do that. Two hours of play isn't enough volume. It's not the most volume in the ideal world, but look, we have constraints, right? It's important to recognize some people just have constraints in their life. So what are constraints that you may have? Well, a job is a constraint. If you have to make money, then you have a constraint. So you have to work around it. And again, this is just on your work days, right? Presumably you don't work seven days a week. You may. I mean, I used to work seven days a week and I still learned how to play poker playing two hours a day. But if you have um, if you have big constraints, you have to work around them. You have to do the best with what you have. And I mean, eventually you realize I have to get rid of the constraint. And getting rid of a job is actually kind of easy once you get decent at poker. Now, what if you have kids? Kids will really wreck you. This is why it's actually very difficult for people with a family to succeed at anything new because it's hard to learn anything new because you saw it takes like it takes a lot of time to learn anything new so like right here wake up would be like wake up at 6 a.m take care of kids 
get the kids wherever they need to go. Then you go to work. Then you come home. Then you deal with kids until they go to bed at 8 o'clock. Then you have an hour or two before it's time to go to bed. Then it becomes really, really difficult. And I don't have a good answer for that. I've gotten way less done for the last um, three years. But I do my best to work around it, right? I don't take care of the kids all day every day. I mean, I am now. But I don't take care of the kids all day every day. We have a nanny that helps and grandparents that help. But you need to figure out what is stopping you from success. And is that thing worth it? That's very important. Is that thing that is stopping you from doing exactly what you want to do and getting as good as you want to do, is that thing worth it? Is Are my children worth being less productive? I think they are. Fine. No problem. Is um, going out to the club at nighttime worth you not having the bankroll to play poker because you spend 100 bucks each night or more and you wake up tired and you can't get anything done? Is that worth it? Probably not, right? Some things you need to cut out of your life. Someone here just mentioned video games. Um, I, I don't even know. I didn't read the, read the comment, but like video games are something I had to cut out of my life. I love playing video games. Um, actually, I almost went broke from playing video games. I was living in New York City with my wife. She wasn't my wife then, but she, uh, my girlfriend. Um, same person, different time. And I was just sitting at home playing playing video games all day. And I was watching my bankroll slowly deplete from like not playing as much poker as I'd like and just like living in New York City. I'm like, oh my God, I'm losing my money. I didn't go almost broke. I mean, I still like plenty of money in retirement and whatnot. But I realized I wasn't progressing. It wasn't wasn't chipping up right and like okay i have to do something about this and that made me go play more poker made me work harder for all of you and that was very beneficial right i had a, a fire lit under my butt and it made me happen or made it happen right you go play video games it makes you feel better yeah but i mean video games certainly can make you feel better can i give luke's plays poker a shout out I'm not sure how do you give a shout out on this is that a button i press i don't i don't know how to give a shout out luke sorry um, you made a schedule last week and it's basically the same thing that I did. Well, good. Perfect. That's exactly what we're going for. If you're enjoying this, click like, click subscribe. Hope you're having a good time. If you already have a free account, you get access till the 31st. Yes. Everyone who is a poker coaching member in any way whatsoever has free access to everything on the site until March 31st. So go there, study. We have two webinars with Michael Acevedo and um, Jonathan Jaffe coming up, so check those out. It's completely free. Go there, sign up for a free membership, you'll have full access. When you played online, when was the best time to play? I played um, all day, every day, basically. <laughs> so that's not necessarily a great question for me. But the best time to play is almost always nights and weekends. Um, nights and weekends where the player pool is playing. And most of the player pool is now playing in Europe and or South America slash Canada. I think Canadians are probably pretty good at poker, though. So I think you want to play, like, nighttime Europe time, which happens to be, like, 8 p.m. American time, which is ideal. That said, like, sites like ACR or Bovada, most of those are probably American players, so then you're looking at, like, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. American time. You want to invest some time with it. What is point zero of studying? Where should you start? Go to pokercoaching.com, sign up for a free membership, go to the... Classes tab, click on Courses and Bundles, click on Cash Game Masterclass. Start there. There you go. Is it worth grinding online poker and feeling like poop the next day? Depends on what you get out of it. Do you get anything out of it? Eight left in a sit and go. Top four pay. You're fourth out of eight. Stacks are close. You're in the big blind with pocket eights. Um, I would probably just call. I'd call free flop, but jamming's probably fine too. I mean, jamming can't be bad. How valuable is taking a break from poker? Are you not enjoying poker? Are you losing lots of money? Are you not having fun? Right? All that is, all those are relevant questions. Will you feel like you want to play whenever you come back? Um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you may find you actually don't want it in your life, <laughs> which maybe it wouldn't even be a bad thing, you know? Um, but no, I would say if you're hating life then or hating poker, then don't play poker, right? That seems, seems obvious. You don't have to play poker. I mean, I'm presuming you're not a poker pro. I'm guessing you're not because you asked about um, free six days for the site. So if you're not already a poker pro, it kind of implies that you're not doing it full time. If you're not doing it full time, maybe it's not actually for you. You may like it as a hobby, but I mean, if you're telling me you want to take a break, it means you don't like it. If you have a hobby and you're like, oh my God, I hate this hobby so much, I have to take a break from it. Maybe that shouldn't be your hobby. All right. 
is the new push fold app in the Google Play Store. It should be. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. Where's my phone? Oh, my phone's right here. Send us an email, support at pokercoaching.com. Um, we will send you a link on the Google Store where it's, it's taking forever to get it uploaded on the Apple Store for some reason. Is there PLO content on poker coaching? No. We purposely do not have poker coaching. Um, Jay Nandez does have a book that I am point man on to some extent. That's coming out soon. Jay Nandez has good coaching, so go there for now. You didn't mean to offend me. You did not offend me. Don't worry. I don't get offended. I'm immune to offense. Hopefully all of you are as well. <laughs> um, you love how straight up I am and to the point. Well, I do my best, right? We're not here to goof off. Something people say that they enjoy about my book, my books, are that they don't have much fluff or no fluff. And I think that's because that's just how I appreciate being talked to and how I appreciate learning. I do not want a long, drawn-out story that, you know, does provide a point, that provides one point. I'd rather just be told the point, given a Cliff Notes version of the story, and then we're good to go. Um, but a lot of people like long stories, and they like, you know, slightly more long-winded things, and that's that. Do you think that spin and goes have variance that is too high? Mm, no, you just have to be properly bankrolled. I would tell you to play the spin and goes that have the least amount of variance, right? Some of them have like a million for first in a $5 game. You're just never going to win that, right? So I would tell you not to play those. But I mean, spin and goes are kind of like tournaments where your bankroll just goes down all the time until you spike. So recognize your bankroll is going to go down all the time. It's not going to go up like a like if you were playing regular sit and goes. When am I going to join you on the dark side at ACR? I am not someone who completely lacks self-respect and does not like poker. If I didn't like poker and I lacked self-respect, I would play on ACR. But that's not where we are. We're not there yet. <laughs> Probably we'll never be there. How can you tell which classes on the site are always free and which are premium? The free ones say free. The ones that are poker coaching premium say PCP. And the uh, regular poker coaching content is just says PC. It's on the right-hand side. What do you think about practicing with advanced poker training? I think it's fine. I think it's good. I have no, no real complaints about that. Once you get a large stack, is it probably better to take off the gas a bit? No. You should continue playing fundamentally sound poker. You should play fundamentally sound poker whether you're a shallow stack, whether you're a deep stack, whatever. The idea of, oh, I have chips now so I can sit back and relax is a bad idea because the way you win at poker is by getting all the chips to some extent. When you have 100 big blinds, you should play a little tighter. It depends on the scenario, right? Let's say everyone at your table is playing really tightly. Say they literally are all playing really tightly, right? And you have a big stack because you want a hand. Should you all of a sudden tighten up? No, you should just run them over, right? Now, if they're all in there blasting, raising three betting, four betting every hand, then it's different. It's a different story. But the, the, the answer to the question is it depends on your scenario. We suggest new players finish the cash game masterclass before ever going to the tables. Yes, I think you should study the prerequisites before you actually go to the table. Up to 50 likes. Come on, everyone. Do you not enjoy this content? If you all don't, I'll tell you what, if you all don't enjoy this content, I'll just start, you know, doing work during this time period. I have a lot to do. I know there are some people who like my content because they actually pay for it. <laughs> you all just get to consume it for free. If you all don't like the free stuff, well, hey, I don't have to do it. I do it because I, I hope you all enjoy it and like it. What site do I recommend for online tournaments right now? Um, I don't really. It's kind of a bad spot. If like you have to play and you want to play specifically tournaments, I think ACR or Global are probably your best option. But I think probably ACR is your best option just because they have a decent amount of volume there for tournaments. Um, that said, don't keep any money on there. Keep like deposit whatever you're going to play with that day each day because... I have a bit of info that says they are live to go down at any point in time. So if they're live to go down at any point in time, be careful. James just got in trouble outside. I'm trying to hear what, hear what my wife is saying to him. James has been a bad boy today. I, I don't know anything about random stuff that happens on... Um, I don't know what an ACR stormer is, no. I, I do not follow... Random people who stream on Twitch. Sorry. Um, the lag always uses seven big blind preflop raise. Should we tighten up your calling or three betting ranges, or should we play the same hands? 
So look, if they're going to play a wide range and use a big size, then you can also play a wide range in return. The nice thing about them making it seven big blinds is if you have like 50 big blinds, you can just jam it all in and they can't really do a whole lot about it. So you should probably still be playing a wide range, especially from the later positions when you don't have to worry about the players yet to act waking up with a hand. How do you suggest you play against amateurs in a home game? Figure out what they do wrong. They're probably way too loose when it comes to putting in small amounts of money and way too tight when it comes to putting in a lot of money. I wrote about a hand a long time ago. I played in like a $5 home game where it went like limp, 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 and I had King Jack on the button with something like um, 12 big blinds, and I went all in, like easy all-in decision, right? And one of the limpers, like the third limper called with Ace-King because, you know, they thought Ace-King was just a drawing hand preflop, so they didn't want to put in a lot of money. And then, um, well, they they ended up having Ace-King and I was out. <laughs> What's the rumor on what's happening to ACR? No rumor, just um, pretty public information. It's a small company ran by a small, 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 small group of people. Um, their site goes down frequently. Their site is full of bots and colluders. And that's that, you know. We won't go too deeply into it. Any, I mean, this is all. This is not news. Everybody knows ACR is not a site where you should trust your money. You should not, you really just shouldn't even play there unless you like absolutely feel inclined to play there. Everybody knows this. This is not a secret. Some sites are just bad. <laughs> it's a bad site. To be fair, they have a lot of volume, though, for tournaments. So, you know, if you want to play tournaments, feel free. Um, if you're going to cash in or out, you probably want to use crypto because that's the only thing they're doing quickly. Online poker in America just gets worse and worse. Every iteration just seems to be a worse and worse company. <laughs> it's, it's crazy how, like, back in the day, there were companies like, um, you know, Party Poker. Party Poker was like the best one of the group. They pulled out first because, you know, they're a legitimate company. Um, then Poker Stars and Full Tilt had to pull out, but they're actually legitimate companies too. Poker Stars, or Full Tilt died, obviously, which is not good. But still, everybody got paid eventually and it was okay. It was okay. It was okay enough. And now this next iteration is just like all bottom of the barrel sites. And that is so depressing as a professional poker player to see online poker in America being essentially peddled by uh, horrible, horrible, horrible sites. Have you heard of Poker Bros? Yeah, another awful site. I would tell you to never put your money in. Actually, it's not even a site. It's an app. All of these apps where you have to pay money to a bag man to put money on your site. Recognize what you're actually involved with. My lawyer talked about this the other day in our um, interview, he, where basically a lot of these companies are run by some sort of crime ring. And you do not want to be putting your money into sites operated by crime rings because inevitably when they go down or if they go down or whatnot, you may be called on to testify. And you really want to be going to court to testify against a crime ring. Probably not. Some things you just want to avoid. And um, also, there have been plenty of issues already, like PPP poker back in the past. Um, what was the other one? There's another one. I forget what it was. Anyway, they, like, if you pay a bag man, the bag man doesn't pay you back. Why? They don't have to. Screw you, right? You give them your money, it's their money now. They don't owe you anything. So anyway, that's that. Any push to legalize poker? Not really. Unfortunately not. How do you make the best decision when bounties are in play? Figure out what the bounties are worth in proportion to the chips. Right? Um, thinking if this is on my side or not. I don't know if this is on poker coaching or not, but we have a progressive knockout bounty spreadsheet that gives you roughly the amount of... Um, Gives you roughly the amount that each bounty is worth in terms of chips based on the progressive bounty, which is the only, only difficult thing. Regular bounties are easy, right? If you. I have an article. Uh, Google Jonathan Little $500 bounty Jacksonville. It'll probably come up. It tells you how to calculate the bounty in a regular bounty, but progressive bounties are a little bit more difficult. And um, I have a spreadsheet somewhere. Send us an email. We'll get you the spreadsheet if you really want it. What about Bet Online? I don't know what Bet Online is. It's probably. If they operate in America, they're probably another shady site. I mean, look, this is the easy answer. Do they operate within America and they're not licensed and regulated like Party Poker, 888, Borgata, what else? Poker Stars. Are there any others? World Series of Poker. If they're not those, they're probably shady. Actually, they are shady because they're operating in an area that the law says is definitively not allowed. 
And um, if you play on a site where the, they're definitively not allowed, I mean, realize that they're live to take your money at any point in time, and that's okay, right? You know when you go to play there that you're taking an immense amount of risk with your money. And that's that. As long as you're happy to lose your money, it's okay. Do I think the apps are rigged? Mm, that's actually a legitimate question. Um, I don't know. I don't actually know if they are rigged. And the reason I don't know if they are rigged is because I don't play on them. But I do know there have been Chinese poker apps out there that professionals have played for high stakes, and they have been rigged. I do know that there are some apps out there that you can up, like raise and lower the variance of the game for play money games. So that's obviously rigged. Um, if they can do that on play money games, maybe they can on the real games. I don't know. They're shady sites. It's a sports betting site that also has poker. So look, if you're playing on a sports betting site and they are not licensed in America, they are definitively breaking the law. And um, if they are definitively breaking the law, then uh, yeah, you really don't want to put your money on a site that also has a sports book. And interestingly enough, basically all the sites have sports books. Like ACR, for example, has a big sports book. They have bad lines, but they have a big sports book. It's always not. It's always interesting when you can see um, the sites that offer really bad lines of sports books. That kind of tell you, tells you the customers they're they're catering to when it comes to poker players. And uh, ACR has some pretty bad lines. Like, yeah, if you're playing with us, you're an idiot. That's basically what they say. <laughs> Where I think a poker star is a completely legitimate company and is not rigged in the least bit. None of the licensed regulated sites are because they have significantly way 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 too much to lose and it would be really really dumb. Just got third in a tournament and the 150K. Congrats, Mike. Good job, good work. You want to come say hello? Are you being nice? Come here. You're not being nice? Tell everyone that you're sorry. Are you, how are you doing? He's being bad today? Why are you being bad? Are you going to be a good boy? Can you tell mommy you're sorry? Tell everybody bye bye. Say I love you. I love oh no, you tell me I love you. <laughs> You're a good boy. Sometimes you have to be good. There's Mr. James. Yeah, he's having a rough day today. You want to talk about anything? That's nice music I hear out there. All right, go play with mommy. Love you. See you later. Oh, so, you know, yesterday we had a deal with James where if he was a good boy all day, we'd let him watch 30 minutes of Star Wars. That was a mistake because whenever he watches Star Wars, he starts turning everything shaped like this at all into a lightsaber or a gun. He does pew, pew, or swings it. And inevitably, it'll hit you in the face. Can't be watching Star Wars. That was a mistake, probably. Um, how'd you study poker when I was coming up? I would play sit and goes. And I would use a program called Sit and Go Power Tools, which is well defunct and much slower than what we have available today. And um, I would go through every single game, I've, every single hand I played, and I would find every single mistake I played using that program. Now there's programs like ICMizer. You can um, type in jonathanlillpoker.com slash ICM. I think it'll bring it right up. Or uh, search ICMizer, Jonathan Little on YouTube. It'll bring it up. Some videos of me playing with it. And it can analyze your games and tell you where you're making mistakes. And that's how I got good with short stacks. That said, even then, it's like not perfect, but it's still way better than what most people are doing. Toxic basically says what a lot of people are saying here. You went all in with aces against kings and a king came on the flop. Is that proof that the site's rigged? It's exactly how a lot of people think. And they don't realize that you're going to go on bad runs that are worse than you could possibly think are possible. And you're going to go on great runs that you would think are not possible. I mean, I've had multiple times in my career where I've had like really deep runs back to back. I won a tournament and chopped the next one four ways one time back to back. I've won two tournaments at Bellagio back to back. I've taken two seconds back to back. Then I've also had like 40 tournaments in a row with no caches. And it's normal, right? You personally use PyoSolver. I have it on my computer. I don't use it all that much. I outsource it to my guy, just GTO. He takes care of me. At some point, you'll get to where you have the resources to pay people to do the things that you don't necessarily want to be doing. And I think that most people actually are already at that point for many, many things. Not necessarily poker, because poker is expensive. Because people who are good at poker, you know, you have to pay them good money to do these types of things. 
But like, say you want to become a good swimmer. Hire a swim coach. Swim coach costs what? 50 bucks an hour? You can get good at swimming in a short period of time just by hiring a swim coach. What if you want to learn archery? Hire an archery coach. Don't just get out there and practice and try to do it yourself. Hire a coach. The coach will help you. Hire someone to do the stuff, right? Things like um, answering support emails, for example. I don't answer every single support email that comes in. I see every single support email that comes in, and 95% of them don't apply to me, right? A lot of them are like billing questions or where is this specific piece of content? Can you send me to it? Like those questions I don't need to answer. Somebody else can do that. So you need to learn to outsource things that you ne don't necessarily want to do yourself. That is very, very important, and that is how you level up your life. Going shopping for groceries, right? I don't want to go do that. So you hire somebody else to do it. Um, taking care of dry cleaning. I don't want to take care of dry cleaning. So you hire somebody else to do it, right? And essentially, if you're paying them less than you could make in that same period of time, it's a value. And at some point, you get to where you're making decent money. At that point, like you can outsource almost everything. That's the great thing about leveling up is that as you get better and better and your skills become more and more desired by other people, you can start not doing anything you don't necessarily want to do. And I don't want to sit here and solve poker all day. I know some people do that. They'll, they'll sit there and they'll run, run simulations all day and they love it. I don't really love it. I'd rather be making content and helping all of you improve your skills. All right, let's see. Audio is lagging behind today. Well, that's no good. You have no problem getting into money, but when you get to the top 50, you get scared. Stop being scared. Do you play too high? Maybe. You have to stop caring about the money. Get over that. Realize that the money is kind of irrelevant when you buy in. You're already bought in. And all you can do is play your best and make the best decisions you can. How do you prevent yourself from folding big hands? You folded a baby flush multi-weight and it was the winning hand. Well, I mean, sometimes you're going you're gonna to make folds that are quote-unquote incorrect. Um, and that just happens, right? I mean, it might, might even be a good fold, especially multi-way. Uh, but... You have to not necessarily see monsters under the bed and realize that just because people are putting their money in doesn't mean they have the nuts. You need to call with your good bluff catchers, and usually flushes are good bluff catchers. Who does my grocery shopping? Amazon.com. At least where I live, you go to Amazon.com, go to the Whole Foods section. Anything you type in in Whole Foods section will get added to your cart. You click deliver, and Amazon will deliver or Whole Foods will deliver it to you in a few hours. I don't think it's actually working right now because of this virus. But that's how we normally do the groceries. I know also there's a there's like multiple grocery stores in our area that'll do delivery for you. So you just go to their website, type in what you want, and then they deliver it to you. And then you don't have to spend an hour going to get it. Think of the value, right? How much would you pay to not have to ever go grocery shopping again? And it doesn't even work like that. You're actually going to get paid because instead of you going to the grocery store, you're going to sit there and do the work on your end or you're going to level up your life by studying something that you enjoy. You're going to get better. You're going to develop more skills. And those skills are going to help you get way better at life. You can even order at Walmart and just do a curbside pickup. There you go. Walmart will put all the stuff in the bag for you. What's the best way to study poker? Go to pokercoaching.com right now. Sign up for a free membership. The whole site is available for you. Go to pokercoaching.com slash free access. Go right there. Click on the uh, classes tab, then click on courses and bundles, then click on cash game masterclass. Go through that. You have four days. You have four days until the end of March. Everyone, all of you here have free access to all of the work that I've made over the last few years completely for free because I realize a lot of you are stuck at home and you want to be using your time productively. I realize a lot of other high level training courses out there are charging you $1,000 or more. And, um, that's absurd. So normally our price is much cheaper than $1,000. <laughs> but we'll give it to you for free for four more days. What's this Global Poker Index Trophy? This is the People's Choice Award, Poker Personality of the Year. You all like my personality. So that's good. Thank you. You all voted for this. One of the two awards that people vote on for the people they like the most or think deserve it. We won this this year, Poker Personality of the Year. Thank you all very much for giving that to me. That goes right there. Maybe we'll win some more next year. We'll see. 
Are there any videos on poker coaching that explain how to use solvers? Look at Matt Affleck's videos and look at Michael Acevedo's videos. Those are all very, very solver GTO based. All right. How do I handle tilt? I don't really go on tilt. Do you stop playing? I mean, you have to ask, why are you tilting? Usually if you're tilting, it's because you don't fully understand what is happening. And you need to realize that you're going to have big upswings and big downswings. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some, and none of that should matter to you. Just because everybody else around you is tilting doesn't mean you have to tilt, right? Try to put yourself in other people's eyes. When you're tilting, look at them and look through their eyes and think, what do they think of you? They think you're probably a baby who can't handle losing a hand. And that's ridiculous, right? So realize that you're going to lose some hands, grow up, and understand that all you can do is play your best in your situation. Am I playing online? No, right now I'm doing a, a show called A Little Coffee. How many books have I written? 14 that have been published. Two more that have not been published yet. They're coming soon. One's coming out in June, with any luck. Might be slightly delayed due to the virus. Called Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em. It's going to be a good, good, good book. And then... Um, What's the other one? Oh, that's a secret one. That was not out yet. We haven't really we haven't discussed that one yet. Would you stake yourself from your last session performance? I don't even know what that means. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We are humans and we have emotions. That's why we tilt. Yeah, you have to get rid of those. Emotions don't really work so well when it comes to poker. And also ask, why do I feel the way I feel? I lost a hand. So I should feel upset? Who told, who told you that? Well, society, the people around you, they tell you you're supposed to feel bad when things don't go exactly as you want. But realize, you know things aren't going to go exactly as you want. So if you know things aren't going to go exactly as you want, why would you even care when they don't go exactly as you want? Right? You have to recognize that just because people tell you you're supposed to feel something does not mean that you're actually supposed to feel that thing. Do I live in Florida? No, I live in New York City. I have to go now. Instagram caps me at an hour. Hope you all have a fantastic day. Make the most of it. Like I said, we had a nice schedule here before I, uh, can I undo this? Control undo. That doesn't even work here. Oh, does that work? I don't think this works. Anyway, we had a nice schedule. Make the most of your day. Make a schedule. Be smart. Please, please, please realize that a lot of you are sitting at home with not a whole lot to do. And this is an absolute gift. This time period where you're sitting at home without a lot to do will allow you to learn many, 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 many skills to improve your life. So make sure you set a schedule, stick to it, spend your time wisely. I repeat what program I use. I don't know what program I use. Pokercoaching.com slash free access, completely for free. Um... When will I stream more of this? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We do this show. It's called A Little Coffee. You can go back and listen to all the past episodes. Some of them are timely. Most of them aren't, though. And um, there's a podcast. You can listen to them, uh, the Poker Coaching Podcast with Jonathan Little. And also, you can find them at youtube.com slash poker coaching. So that's that. Have a great day. We have a webinar coming up, I believe, today with Michael Acevedo. I think we have another one on Tuesday with Jonathan Jaffe. So make sure you take advantage of those. I pay these coaches good money to show up, do great work for all of you. And well, now you have literally no excuse because it's completely for free for the, until the end of March. Enjoy it. Have fun. Good luck. Please make the most of your time. You only have one life. Do not squander.